Function machines. A function machine is just a rule that's followed. We have an input or independent variable x that we insert into the function machine. We have a rule that we follow and we get an output f of x. So f of x does not mean f times x, even though it's written in a way that kind of implies multiplication. When we have those parentheses, we have learned to multiply, but it does not mean f times x. It really is just the output, kind of acts like the y. So the y, when we have y equals x minus three. And we've seen this before. We've seen this function sort of rule thing happening, just not in this notation. So we can write it like f of x equals x minus three. That looks a lot like y equals x minus three. Now we can put in an input, follow the rule, and get an output. So in this case, we're going to find out what f of zero is. That means we're inserting a zero in for the input, and we're seeing what the output is. So f of zero, we're going to replace x with a zero, and then subtract three, so that is our rule. So zero minus three. f of zero equals negative three. And we can represent this on a t-chart that you've seen before, where we have a zero right here. When we insert a zero into the function machine, our output is a negative three. We can also find f of negative three. f of any value here we can put inside for x and see what our output is. f of negative three, instead of x, we're going to put a negative three. Negative three minus three, which will give us negative six. So here we have f of negative three equals negative six. So let's take a look at what this means graphically. So we have our input and we have our output. In this case, x is our input and y is our output. And so we can insert some values in here. We've already looked at zero, negative three, and negative three, negative six. So our input was zero, our output was negative three. Input, x was negative three. Our output, f of negative three, was negative six. And we can see those values up here on the graph. So when x equals zero, our output is negative three, right here. When x equals negative three, our output is negative six. So let's also take a look at this. If we were taking a look at this graph, we can see that this is a slope of one. This is one times x, even though it's not written, and a y-intercept of negative three. So this is what the graph of our function looks like. Let's also go ahead and find out what happens when our input is three. So if our input is three, f of three is equal to three minus three, f of th three equals zero. And we can see that right here. Now let's take a look at using this graph and using our function notation to figure out what happens if we know that um, f of x is two. So we know what our output is. Our output is two, and it's asking for what, what is our input when the output is two? Well, we can kind of take a look at this graph right here, and here would be our output, or our f of x is two. What would our input be? So we can see it looks about five here. So that's graphically how we can figure that out. We can also do that algebraically. We have our function f of x equals x minus three. Instead of f of x, our output, we're going to put a two because we want to know what x is when our output is two. Two is equal to x minus three. Using the addition property of equality, add three to both sides, and we have two plus three is five, x is equal to five, which is exactly what we kind of guess by looking at our graph. So we can see when our input is five, our output is two. We can also check that over here. So when our input is five, we can substitute a five in here. Five minus three is two, so our output is two. Now let's take a look at a little trickier one. So here we have an absolute value function machine, and we're inputting x and we're outputting f of x again. And here we have f of x equals the absolute value of two times x. This symbol right here, these two bars, mean absolute value. And what that actually means is the distance away from zero. So when we talk about distances, we don't say we're negative two miles away. When we talk about distances, we only use positive values. So my distance is going to be positive. So when I have this absolute value around something and I'm taking the absolute value, it's going to be the positive value. So what is f of x when x is equal to negative five? So our input's negative five. 
So f of x we know is equal to the absolute value of 2x. So we can insert a negative 5 in for our x value. So f of negative 5 equals the absolute value of 2 times negative 5. 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. Now remember, this, is the this means the distance away from 0. So if we have negative 10 right here, its distance from 0 is 10 units. So this is just 10. So f of negative 5 is equal to 10. Now interestingly, we can look at what f of 5 is going to give us in this case. So f of 5 is equal to the absolute value of 2 times 5. So instead of an x here, we put a 5. And that gives us the absolute value of 10. Well, the absolute value of 10, you're looking at the distance from 0. And from 0, 10 is also 10 away. And so that also gives us a 10. So for two different inputs, negative 5 and 5, our absolute value gives us a quantity of 10 in both cases. And we can look at that over here. We can check back in with our function machine, substituting a 5 in here for x and substituting a negative 5 in here for x to see that we get an output of 10 in both cases. Now what happens if we're given f of x? So here we have our same function and our same input and output, and we're given that f of x is equal to 4. So our output is 4. They gave us the output, and they want the input. So what is x? So we know f of x is equal to the absolute value of 2x. And so instead of f of x here, that our output, we're going to put a 4. We want that to be true. So 4 is going to equal the absolute value of 2 times x. That means the distance from 0 is 4 right here. So we can end up at negative 4 or 4, and that distance is still going to be 4. So the distance from here to here is 4, and from 4 to 0 is also 4. So inside here, inside this absolute value sign, we want that to be a 4 or a negative 4, because either way we're going to get that distance of 4. So 2x, 2 times x, remember that's what that means when the 2 and the x are right next to each other. That's just multiplication there. So 2 times x. We know 4 is going to equal 2 times x. So that's what we want right there. We want this 2x to equal 4. So 4 equals 2x. We can divide both sides by 2. Division property of equality. And we get x equals 2. But remember this inside can also be negative 4. So negative 4 can equal 2x. So if negative 4 is equal to 2x, divide both sides by 2. Again, division property of equality. And we have negative 2 is equal to x. So x can be our input, can be two different values to give us the output of 4. And that kind of matches what we learned in the last um, board. So here we had 5 and negative 5. Both gave us an output of 10. And here we have 4. And we have two different ways to get 4. We can either have x equals 2 or x equals negative 2. And we can take a look at that to make sure that that works here or in our input. So if our input right here is, is 2, I can substitute a 2 in for x. 2 times 2 is 4. The absolute value of 4, the distance away from 0, is going to be 4. So that gives us a 4. Also negative 2. So 2 times negative 2, insert the negative 2 in here for the input. That's going to give us a negative 4. The absolute value of negative 4 is going to give us 4.